Well, hello everyone, welcome back. Um, way back uh, in the mid 70s, I don't know when it was now, early to mid 70s possibly. Yeah, uh, my f we were on a holiday in a small seaside town, my family and I, and uh, my father decided to go and look around the town, see if there was any interesting tool shops there, as he always did. And we went past this um, interesting shop and it had like air guns in the window and things. And um, I saw several air guns in there. So my dad took me in and we had a look round. And I said to him, you know, would you buy me an air gun, dad? He says, oh, I don't know, they look pretty expensive. So the guy behind the counter says, um, well, we've got this. Well, it wasn't this one. But he said, we've got this. I thought, How much was it? Maybe a five or something like that, five pounds, something possibly. So probably still quite a lot of money back in the 70s. And the guy behind the counter showed us it and showed us how to work it. And, and Dad said, yeah, okay, I'll buy you that one then. So anyway, got it home. And over the years, I shot the hell out of that thing. I really did. Um, at one point, the trigger broke. Uh, we had a, back then, we used to have a metalwork class at school. So what I did, I went in there and grabbed a relevant piece of aluminium, shall we say. And... Uh, fashioned my own replacement trigger for it and that lasted ages as well uh, and then um, I sold it I think I sold it to one of my friends but anyway back in the 80s I started you know thinking about this and in uh, January 1984 I bought this this is a later version it's not the same as the one I used to have uh, but the box is the same as I remember it the box is exactly the same it's got exactly the same um, you know, the box never changed actually, to be honest with you. I think it probably hasn't changed because these things were um, originally introduced, I think, or manufactured from about the mid 1930s with a bit of a break during the Second World War and then they finished the manufacturing in the uh, mid 1990s, I think, if I remember rightly. Uh, that's when the old guy died, Harrington died, Mr. Harrington died, and of course the uh, nanny state kicked in in this country and, you know, people were then frightened of dangerous machines like this you know and you weren't allowed them anymore and <gasps> the government considered you to be very very naughty and uh, oh dearie me anyway let's pop it out the box and have a look see what we got shall we and you can see the box is a bit worse for wear right let's pop him over there very carefully because he's getting on a bit now but uh here is the gun and they came with uh, a cork or two i have one left here and some darts, look. The little darts. I used to keep mine in the cork so they'd stay together. But here is the uh, the gun itself, look, guys. As I say, this is a later model because you've got the uh, redesigned pistol grip here. So you've got the little, um, you know, where your fingers go in there. Which mine was just a straight handle just here. Uh, of course, it never had the safety on it. I'd say this is a, uh, you know, thing they put on later on. Safe and fire. What we got on the other side? Anything interesting? That's it. It's all uh, like die cast alloy, I think. It's all uh, done in one piece and most likely machined through here. The uh, half the uh, is assembled. You can see. Look, this is a die cast. This is the second part where the trigger group is. The fire control group lives in here two screws because I the problem I used to have with my original one was that this screw used to back out here that screw used to back out when you're firing it all the time um, I, I should have put some well if I'd have known about it back then when I was a kid to put some lock tie on it to stop it backing out but I used to get one of my dad's screwdrivers and tighten it back in again um, shall we have a bit of a closer look at it then guys well we'll start at the muzzle then uh, my original one had a uh, aluminium sleeve just here around the spring but this one's a uh, as the later model is plastic, as you can see, um, I don't know if you can see in there, but the uh, barrel is actually sort of like peened over, so you can't take this thing apart. Once it's made, that's it, you can't take them apart. Now, moving along to the uh, main frame here, there's a fixed front sight. At some point, obviously, I've painted this one white, make it easy to see. Moving along to the main body again, here is the trigger. They put a different trigger on the, uh, the later models. It's a bit wider. Mine was a much plainer trigger than this. And we have the safety there. 
and there is the uh, manufacturer TJ Harrington I think that says there yep and sons I'm looking through the viewfinder guys uh, there's the fixed rear sight which I've painted a couple of dots on again to make it easy to see and you can see the uh, sear in here that's the bit that engages on the back of the barrel and it looks to me like at some point in the past I've uh, filed this in order to make the trigger a bit lighter because I think it had a fairly heavy trigger pull on it. There's one of the screws holding the side panel on. Turn him over. You can see all this bit comes away to um, access the trigger group, assemble the trigger group into the gun. And then we have the uh, German Oh, it's made by Umarex back then. Look, it was taken over by Umarex. There's a German F there, which shows a low power rating of the thing. I'll put up the power rating just here because I can't remember what it is, but I'll put it just here for you guys to take a look at. When the shop owner was demonstrating my original pistol to my father and myself, um, he said, oh, you cock it like this. See? So I had a go. Well, of course, being a little lad at the time, I couldn't do it at all. Let's, there we go, uncock it. I couldn't do it at all, so what my dad suggested was, um, I'll tell you what, I'll get you a bit of wood when we get home, lad. The sleep, and you can do it like that. And that's how I did it. Just put my full weight against it and cocked it like that. It's the only way I could do it, you know, a little lad at the time. <laughs> um, so now it's cocked. We'll put the safety on for all the, uh, there we go, all the, you know, Safety Sally's watching out there. Um, to load the gun, what we have to do is, keeping finger off the trigger of course, we have to remove this little screw at the back here. You see it's got a little plunger. And there's the breech there. And what you do is you'd put a pellet in there, just pushed in with your finger. And then it would then, as you can see, push the pellet into the uh, the chamber proper and you screw it up because there's actually um there's actually a little hole in here somewhere you probably won't be able to see it but there's a little hole in the uh, barrel at the back here somewhere um, I don't know where it is now but it's in there somewhere and basically um, you screw that in and there's a little uh, o-ring on there that seals it my original one had a leather seal on there and basically when you pull the trigger it uh, the barrel is driven or is allowed to go forwards and the barrel is actually the piston as well so as it goes forward it compresses the air in this section here hang on let's set the safety off there we go right in. so we there it goes you can actually hear the um hang on let's see if we can hear this guys no yeah just about heard that didn't you i hope but uh, in this position it just compresses the air in the uh, cylinder here and through the little hole in the barrel uh, forcing the uh, pellet out of the other end so it's a very simple idea not particularly accurate because obviously when you fire it it jerks around quite a bit obviously you know with the, this weight mass flying forwards here it does uh, create quite a bit of um, a recoil as it were um, as you can see cocking it leaves a nice mark on your hand. Now then, as I live in a town, um, shooting this thing outdoors is going to be a bit problematic. Uh, we don't want to upset the neighbours, so what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll take it down into the uh, workshop and we'll have a bit of a go down there, shall we guys? Alright then, so here we are in the workshop. Uh, we're exceedingly limited in range. Uh, that's about seven feet down there. And beside the uh, brick wall, I'm going to put this off cut of uh, work top there. That's uh, getting on for an inch thick, that work top. Not that the uh, pistol's going to penetrate it. And in front of that, we have our target. These days, I do have a very limited uh, range of ammunition available, so we're only going to use these three rounds here. Okay, let's go ahead, cock the gun, and make it ready. There we go, just apply the safety and then we um, just pop out this little plunger at the back here. Hold him for a second or two. Uh, where's one of my pellets? There we are. So what you do is you just uh, 
drop them in the back there like so and then pop the plunger back in and screw it in nice and tightly not too tightly obviously but there we go it's nice and tight right so we're ready to go now so we'll uh, just uh, take off the safety here because that's my primary safety this thing here so it's out of the trigger guard and we'll have a go at shooting the pistol shall we guys let's have a look can we get it to hit anywhere on the target for you hopefully yes that's one round All ready to go for the second round then guys. We'll do the target again. I'm not aiming this properly, so um, whether we're gonna hit in the same place, I don't know. Not far off. Safety's on again, guys. Um, air guns have a uh, tendency to what they call diesel, and that is uh, compression ignition to a degree. And that is what I can smell in the garage right now. I can smell a little bit of uh, burning oil going on. There's obviously no smoke from the front of it, although there can be sometimes with the more powerful guns, but uh, yeah, I can smell it in here right now, burning oil. Let's give it the third round in, shall we guys? Where did that one go to then, I wonder? Okay, so here we go. Uh, that's the first round. That's the second round. We can ignore that one. And that's where the third round went in, just there. Right, let's lay him down a minute, see what we've got behind the back here, shall we? Oops. Right, there's one round, all nicely flattened out. Can we get out of it? Should be able to. There we go. Right then, I was able to recover three rounds. All three rounds. Um, you can see they all got squashed in different ways. Um, two of them, as they went through the cardboard, they obviously turned round a bit and got flattened. Um, sideways as you can see but this one here made it through and got squashed on the face of it and here is a unfired round for a uh, comparison this is little wad cutter all right guys so here we are back in the studio with the old gat here the gat uh, with its three uh, recovered pellets I'll put you a nice close-up photograph of them right now. There you go, they got nicely flattened out, didn't they? Because the thing with this gun is it's um, a smooth bore, it doesn't have any rifling in the barrel, so that means the pellets aren't doing this as they go through the air, they just uh, go through, you know, any old hell really. So that's why, they, uh, that's why they're unstable, and that's why two of them tumbled when they, uh, after they hit the cardboard and one didn't. Okay guys, just another bit of uh, my nostalgia for you guys, for you lot to look at. The old GAT. As I say, this is one I bought in 1984. Uh, you know, as a replacement for my original one. I say I hadn't had one for uh, quite a few years when I purchased this one. Because I'd sold it to a friend of mine a long while ago now. But um, yeah, I uh, just found it in the garage. Thought you guys might like want to look at it. All right, then, guys. So well, thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed the review, please feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and don't forget to click on this button here, the little bell, giving you the option to receive updates as to uh, when I put new videos out, like this one. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram. Uh, so I've already put some photographs of this one up today. Um, I'm getting a few likes on it already. Um, and then there's my Patreon page if you wish to support the channel in that way. Another really good way to support the channel is um, I have a GearBest affiliate link, a special GearBest affiliate link in my description below. If you click on that link, you can buy anything you like except these things from GearBest and I will get a small amount of commission from that sale, which I plough straight back into the channel to bring you more interesting things to look at.
Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. Um, I'm off to uh, put this in a nice safe place again. This box is a little bit battered. Uh, and I'll uh, see you here again at Rathbone Manor uh, in the near future then. Laters! Rough.